Do you want to get started using credit cards and travel points so you could travel anywhere and not have to worry about cost? Well, in this video, I'm going to share with you the overall system of how travel rewards work and three steps to get started. What's up, Wise Flyers? Welcome to another video. If you're new here and you want to learn how to travel anywhere in the world almost free by using credit cards and travel points, start now by subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss a thing. So the number one question I'm asked all the time is, how am I able to afford to travel so much? Well, the goal of this channel is to make it so that people start asking you the same question. To be honest, I'm not rich. I am not a trust fund baby. I have not received any large amounts of money. The short answer to that question is I use credit cards and travel points for a system called travel points banking. In short, travel points banking is smartly earning and redeeming rewards offered by the financial and travel industries. When points and miles are maximized to their full potential, you could get amazing travel value and great rich experiences. An example of maximizing the system is when I personally went to seven continents in four months and only paid $241 in flight costs. I even published a book about this trip. To be clear, you don't have to use the travel points banking system to get a huge grand around the world trip. It could be as simple as a domestic flight. Let's face it, travel could be really expensive, especially if you just want a round trip to Europe. That could be as much as $2,000 just for flight and hotel. But with this system, you could get a round trip and seven nights in a hotel for less than $200 total. I know it sounds too good to be true, but in this video, I'm gonna share with you exactly how this system works and three steps to get started. First, let's explore why this system even exists. In the 1980s, American Airlines created the first frequent flyer mile program. So for all the customers who kept flying with American Airlines, they were rewarded with frequent flyer miles which they could use for future trips. Because they were really successful, it wasn't too long after that all the other airlines followed the same system by creating frequent flyer mile loyalty programs. Traditionally, earning miles was only done by flying on planes. So if you were to fly a thousand miles on a plane, then you would earn a thousand miles. And then later on, if you accumulated enough frequent flyer miles, then you could use that for a free trip in the future. Then later on, the banks came along and paired the spending habits of Americans with the love of travel with airlines, and they merged together to create airline credit cards. The banks offered these travel roar credit cards with a rate of earning one point a thousand miles was equal to ten dollars worth of travel. For the average responsible spending American, that would take a really long time to accumulate enough miles for just the basic round trip when using the credit card for everyday spending. As more and more banks became involved with travel rewards credit cards, it became very competitive, so they started offering credit card sign-up bonuses or sign-up offers. There's many ways to say it, but essentially it's a bribe. The banks realized that the average credit card holder only gets one credit card every 10 years, so these bribes or sign-up bonuses became a lot more competitive to get a spot in your wallet. Nowadays, some of these sign-up bonuses are offering well more than $1,000 in travel benefits just with one credit card sign-up bonus. To give you an example of how a credit card sign-up bonus works, I got a Citibank Advantage American Airlines credit card which offered 60,000 American airline miles after completing a minimum spending of $3,000 in three months. What that means is I had to spend $3,000 on this credit card within three months in order for me to get the 60,000 mile sign-up bonus. So if I only spent $2,500 in the first three months, I would not have received that 60,000 bonus. And that's one of the biggest mistakes that beginners make. They get credit cards that they're not able to complete the minimum spending for. Therefore, they can't get the sign-up bonus and get those hundreds or sometimes thousands of dollars in free travel. So it's really important to make sure that you get a credit card that you know you could complete the minimum spending for. To give you an idea of what those 60,000 American airline miles are worth, you could get a round trip domestically for 12,500 points from anywhere in the US that American Airlines flies, 
or it could be 25,000 miles round trip. Or for 40,000 American airline miles, you could pretty much get, get a one-way economy to anywhere in the world. So even as far as Australia, that would be 40,000 miles. Or you could get the most value out of these miles by getting luxury first class or business class seats to a lot of different places around the world. As a family of three, it cost us 62,500 American airline miles per seat to get these business class seats from Taiwan to New York on Japan Airlines. So they were lie flat seats, really comfortable. And if we would have paid full price, these seats would have been well over $5,000. So you could see the value there of how you could get really luxury and expensive seats for almost nothing. If you like this video and want to learn as much as you can about credit cards and travel points, I put together a beginner's guide playlist. You could click the link above for that. I try to make these videos as easy to understand as possible, so much so that my five-year-old daughter, after watching my videos, she could even understand how the miles and points game works as well. And I know I've been to 10, five continents and 10 countries. So today, I'm gonna teach you about doing wise flights, and that's pretty sure. So the trip is you have to go to Hawaii or Costa Rica. Travel the world always free. That was my five-year-old daughter, Bella, by the way. So as you see, these sign-up bonuses could be really lucrative if used the right way, but keep in mind, that whenever you book flights using airline miles, there will be taxes that you have to pay. So for example, using the, um, the award flights from Taiwan over to New York, it cost $68 in taxes, which is still a really amazing deal. And this works for hotels as well. For example, if you get the Chase World of Hyatt card, it offers a sign-up bonus of 60,000 Hyatt points after completing the minimum spending. So with those 60,000 points, you could spend 12 nights at the Hyatt Place Dallas Allen. So that's a good way to stretch your Hyatt points. Or another option with these Hyatt points is you could go to an all-inclusive resort like we did as a family of three when we went to the... Hyatt Zalera in Montego Bay, Jamaica. If we would have paid full price for our four night stay at that all inclusive Hyatt resort, it would have cost us over $1,200. So get a lot of value with those Hyatt point sign up bonuses. And the great thing about using hotel points is that there are no taxes or fees like the airlines charge. Sometimes these cards that offer big sign-up bonuses have annual fees and sometimes they don't. Sometimes they offer an annual fee which is waived the first year, which is really good, which means you could use all the benefits of the credit card and, and the sign-up bonus and then 10, 11 months down the line, you could assess whether or not it's worth keeping and paying the annual fee. My goal with this video is to make it the best introduction to credit cards and travel points, not only with the video content, but with your questions. So if you have any questions throughout this video, please leave it in the comments. I promise I'll answer every single one of them. This way, people in the future who are watching this video, they could scroll down in the comments and learn a lot more from the same questions that you have. Part of the travel points banking strategy is to open up multiple credit cards so that you could get multiple sign-up bonuses to get multiple hundreds of thousands of airline miles and points for a ton of free travel. Whenever I mention that, usually the question comes up, but what about your credit score? Doesn't it get messed up when opening multiple credit cards? I share what happened to my credit score after opening up 45 credit cards. And if you wanna know my personal credit score, you could click the link above for that video. But just to give you the short answer, no, your credit score isn't negatively impacted by opening multiple credit cards as long as you're paying everything in full and you're doing it the right way. When following the right strategy, then your credit score actually could increase. Which brings me to my biggest disclaimer that I always tell as many people as possible, which is to not get credit cards if you plan on getting in debt and spending more money than you have. The most important thing with getting travel credit cards is to always pay it in full every single month because travel rewards credit cards has some of the highest interest rates out there out of any credit card, sometimes as high as 24%. So it's important to treat your credit card just like a debit card and not spend more money than you have that's in the bank. If you're in credit card debt right now, then I recommend holding off on doing 
travel points banking until the credit card debt is paid off. And if you're not comfortable opening any credit cards, then that's perfectly fine. Just as long as you're creating a great relationship with the banks, you're paying everything in full, you're not applying for too many cards too fast, you kind of, you're spacing it out, you're being a great customer, which is what they want, then they'll keep awarding you with multiple credit cards with their big sign-up bonuses. Because even if you decide not to pay any of the annual fees and you don't pay any interest on your cards, they're still making a ton of money off every single transaction. The banks are earning two to 3% off every single credit card transaction. That's trillions of dollars that they're earning every single year. So the banks are not hurting at all with you getting multiple credit card sign-up bonuses. So now that you have a good idea of how the whole credit cards and travel points system works, I'm gonna give you three tips to get started. The first step is to have a travel goal in mind. When having a clear travel goal, it's a lot easier to figure out what your strategy is. And if you're not sure what your travel goal is, I'll help you figure that out right now. For our first wedding anniversary in 2017, we went to South Africa and Paris and with seven nights in a hotel for the two round trips, it cost us $351 total. And as a little bonus, we were able to add Paris in for the day, which was a free stopover. Remember, it doesn't have to be a really big extravagant trip. It could be something really small and simple. You know, when you're first starting out, it could be really hard coming up with a travel goal. So that's why I have these questions here that'll help you figure out what your travel goals are. So there's a lot of questions here, but I'll just go over the basics. Are you looking for economy or do you wanna do luxury business or first class seats? So you could pause the video here and try to answer these questions for yourself. Knowing the answer to all these questions could help you figure out a clear goal of your points banking strategy. Step number two is to sign up for loyalty programs. So regardless of your travel goals or who you're traveling with, you're gonna need a place to store all of your miles and points that you'll be earning. These loyalty accounts will also be useful when in the future if you have flexible currencies like Chase Ultimate Rewards and you wanna transfer it over to these airline programs or hotel programs. And when you sign up for these loyalty programs, you could sign up for some of their emails. I recommend creating a separate email account because it could be a little overwhelming with the amount of emails that they send. But some of those emails are actually beneficial. They'll send you certain deals and promotions to get extra miles and points. There are a lot of loyalty programs and I don't recommend you signing up for all of them. So here's a list of the top five airlines that you'll probably be using or at least getting credit cards earning miles and points with. I definitely recommend at least signing up for United Mileage Plus, American Airlines Advantage, and Delta Sky Miles. And there's only a small handful of hotel loyalty programs that you could sign up for as well. Each time you sign up for one of these programs, it takes maybe two minutes to fill out. You just put your information in. But when you fill out this information, make sure you keep your login information as as well as your new membership number because then you're gonna save this information into a system called award wallet so awardwallet.com is a free service it's a great way to keep track of all of your miles and points in one place so you don't have to log into each airline account or each hotel account to see how many miles you have if you're if it went up or down it's all in one place completely free at awardwallet.com. If you click the link in the description, I have a page where I have all of the loyalty program links to sign up for. So that's completely free as well. You could just, whenever you have a chance, sign up for some of the recommended loyalty programs. So there's three things to keep in mind when opening up loyalty programs. If you are traveling with a partner, spouse, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, then you will have to have individual airline accounts if you plan on taking advantage of it. The second thing to keep in mind is that children as well as babies, it doesn't matter what age they are, they can all have their own airline mile account. You're never too young to get started earning miles for paid flights. The third thing to keep in mind is that not all loyalty programs allow you to pool all the points and miles together to use for one big itinerary. Most of the programs have, make you have separate accounts. 
except for when you use airlines such as British Airways or JetBlue, they allow you to pool the points together as a family, or with hotels, Hyatt points allow you to pool the points together. So keep that in mind when you start earning. Step number three is to pick the right travel rewards credit card. So there are over 30 different travel rewards credit cards and if you're just getting started, it could be very overwhelming to know which one to start out with. I get asked the question all the time, which card should I get first? Well, it's a really hard question to answer for each individual person because like I was saying before, everybody has individual travel goals so there's not one card that fits all preference. A card that a single 25 year old would buy is a lot different than a car that a 35 year old with three kids would buy. So that's the same way credit cards work. Everybody has their own travel goals. Some people only want to travel domestic. Some people don't even want to fly at all and they just want to use the hotel points for road trips around the country. Along with the huge variety of travel credit cards out there, there are also a lot of restrictive bank application rules. So you're only allowed to apply for certain credit cards at certain times. Each bank has their own application rules and restrictions to get approved. If you're just starting out, this could be too big of a headache to figure out and might make you want to quit. That's why I offer a free card consultation. So to get more information on this, you could click the link in the description and by doing a free card consultation, I'll let you know which is the best card for you for your specific travel goal and also give you some basic card strategy. After thousands of hours of research, I really want to help you figure out which card is best and which path to take with your travel points banking strategy. If you want to take the time to learn this whole system System, you can by watching all my videos or reading other blog posts and, but to be honest what I wish I would have known is to get this shortcut of a free card consultation guaranteed it'll save you a lot of time in the long run just to get a clear idea of what to do next if I were to choose one card for you to get if I had to answer that question of which card to get it would definitely be either the chase freedom unlimited or or the Chase Sapphire Preferred. Those are definitely the two best starter cards for anybody starting out getting credit cards and travel points. Hope this video was helpful for you. If you have any questions at all, leave it in the comment. I promise I'll answer every single question. And if you wanna watch more videos on how to get started with credit cards and travel points, you could click any of these links over here and I'll see you in the next video.